Okay, so you went to um, a heritage auction that was very, very exciting, the Promise Collection, and you were the only one there. So there's like this historical aspect that you were in observance, is that the word? That you observed, and something that you'll never forget, I'm assuming. You were one of the last individuals to get to touch and look at the first part and some may say some of the most exciting parts of the Promise Collection, the biggest collection find that was preserved with one of the coolest stories behind it in comic history. But you also learned something amazing. You learned how to crack open a slab in a unique way. Yeah, I don't know if it's... Obviously, there's many ways to do it. But I saw this way that this gentleman did it. And he doesn't work for Heritage, but he happened to be there and he was cracking them out. And I thought it was very intriguing, and I thought I'd give it a shot. And the first time I tried it was just today on camera. Luckily, it went well. You guys will see that here with this Avengers 8. That's right. First Kang. So we have two books that we're going to show you that we cracked out. Actually, I came out of this uh, a little ahead because I didn't have to crack it out. You did it for me. And I cannot stand cracking books out of slabs. I do not like it. I always, I've never messed up a book, but it always feels like you're going to mess it up. And this is, let's actually back it up a little bit for anyone who's a bit newer. You know, why would you crack out a slab? Um, so we have a graded comic, right? Like any of these that are up here next to me, right? You know, we got the Deli Hands of Kung Fu over there. We got that uh, Peach Momoko Goodness, the Gurusetti Green Ranger Power Rangers 55 exclusive, shout out, Young Avengers, right? So let's say you have a book that you want to break it out. You want, you want that raw book again. There's a lot of reasons for that. What are some? So some of the top reasons are... You just don't want it encapsulated. Okay, you like it raw. You like it raw. Right. Um, you want to upgrade it, so you want to press it or dry clean it so that you feel that you can get that bump in grade. You think it could get a bump? In grade. <laughs> and I would guess a third option would be maybe you want to take it from a, some company's holder to maybe the other company's holder. Yeah, you're trying to see maybe... They will, their, their grading standards are different. Maybe you'll get lucky and it'll get an extra point or something. Like there's a handful of reasons, but for the most part, there's something with the book, you know, a reason why you want to take it out and how do you do it? You know, first off it's in my experience, a lot easier to crack open CGC slabs. What about you? Yeah, I haven't. Have I ever cracked out a CBCS slab? At least a new one. You cracked one out here with us. Like we had to do that that crack. A new CBCS yeah, slab? Yeah, we did the new CBCS slab. We did a CGC slab. And those CBCS slabs are freaking tight. They are. They're they're very solid and they're skinnier, but they feel far more rigid and protected. And I do dig that quite a bit. I love the CBCS holders. I think I've already said that. Labels again, CBCS, you got to work on your labels. We'll I don't it. understand why that's got to be a problem. <laughs> Jeff's going to keep bringing up the labels, CBCS. We, <sighs> we need to fix it. We need to get Nate. Nate, Nate made it. Yo, we got to get him on making some new labels. And I don't care who you out. get to make it. Get a 10-year-old. <laughs> I mean, whatever they do will be an improvement. Oh, my goodness. Jeff cannot stand the CBCS labels. But you know what? There's a lot of other pe benefits to CBCS slabs that we'll get into. Um However, the CGC slabs tend to be a little bit easier to break into. And what are some methods that we've used to break into slabs? Yeah, I mean, look, the newer ones are pretty tough to get into, too. Okay, yeah. you do have to kind of find an opening, get a Back in the day, driver. man, you could just like... Well, we open. did that. We did that with we the Avengers, it. right? Just finger popped it and got it out. Bam. And then the other one was you needed a tool. You got to get in there. You got to work it along the ridge and pop it along the way. You get like a flathead screwdriver. Yeah, get a flathead screwdriver. And then once you get a, maybe the bottom half open... And loose, you can just drag out the book. You're okay. done. Recycle the plastic. Yippee ki -yay. Keep the label because it's important to keep the label, guys. Keep the label in case something happened in the grading process. B, you should turn the label in with your comic so you get it off the census as well. That's what you would do. You send in the label with your comic. It takes the book off the census in case you get a new grade that's higher or lower because there's no guarantees it's going to be higher. Oh, come on. I got to see a thumbs up for that recommendation. I don't think I've ever heard that on the mic. Comic fam, send your grades in to be removed off the census. Preserve and the census. The census is like the sacred timeline. <laughs> Regardless of where you grade your comics, the census for CBCS and CGC, we want, everyone wants those to be preserved. That's true. That's true. You, we, you guys don't need multiverse tangents of, no. of grading tiers. And look, if you do a bunch of grading, 
you can save them all together and then submit it all at once. There okay. You, you don't have to put it in with the book. You just got to send the labels in. Okay, guys. So please do that to keep the, the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the census. Sacred, yeah, the sacred, the sacred census. The sacred census. There you go. <laughs> Sensei. As honest as possible. <laughs> all right. Sensei. That's right. That's plural, isn't it? Um, anyway, so but we cracked it out. All right? There's one more step. You got to. You got to get the comic out of the plastic inner well. Yes. Which we know, by the way, through CGC, we have the documents. We have the proof. We've put a CGC slab in a fish tank. The inner well is water resistant. Yo, Zora, put the link up there for the comic fam to see. But yeah, you can get away with some water on your slab without it penetrating the inner well. Yes, not to say waterproof, guys. Remember that those, you know, when you had a watch and you weren't sure what resistant or proof meant, okay, it was up to a time limit or a depth. So be careful there, guys. We had that thing in there for a while, though. I was we, pretty impressed. Yes, absolutely. And I don't, and it floated too, right? It was buoyant enough because yeah. we had to weigh it down on top of that, but not to be used as a PFD, guys. That's right. Anyways, let's get back to what we did. We took yeah. it out from this hard plastic shell. Now we're going to get to this inner well. See how it rhymed there? We're going to pull it out. We're going to get some scissors. He went with scissors. I've always used an X-Acto. I've always used an X-Acto knife too. I grabbed one for you and you specifically said he used scissors. We're going to use scissors. I believe I slapped it out of your hand and said, give me the damn scissors. Yeah. Yeah. You got aggressive with it. <laughs> Just we wanted to do it right. Okay. Right. Or wrong. I'm not sure yet because yeah, we haven't done it yet. <laughs> so here we go. At this point. At this point. So it was sketch for me. As I'm taking two blades and like cutting this plastic along the top edge. And you I get, tap the bottom so yeah. that the book would go all the way to the bottom. That's very important. Okay. You have to tap the bottom before you take scissors to the inner well because you don't want to, well, first off, you want to tap it gently because you don't want to mess with the comic up. You're trying to get that comic to go to the very bottom of the inner well so you have enough space to cut along the top so you don't nick the comic. Right, exactly. Because the last thing you want now is to take your blue label to now make it a trend book. Yeah. All right. So you cut and we cut very slowly on this. All right. He was very comfortable and did it. And maybe his may have been a th thinner scissor. We kind of look, use like this cooking scissor almost. Yeah, so it's thicker. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to cut, cut chicken breast here, man. I'm trying to cut. It's, it's actually label. my cooking scissors. That's what you use. <laughs> I, I That's actually tell. is what they were. I could tell. I was like, okay. Um, so we made it work, right? Regardless. So it op we got the top done and then we filleted it down the middle. Okay, like a surgeon, but you got to be careful because if you go, the comic can push into the scissor, but so you bowed it and there's enough flexibility there where it's pretty easy to get going. But the further you go down, the tighter it's going to get to the bottom. So for the very first book we did, The Avengers 8. First I, appearance of Kang, first, Kirby goodness. Exactly. Went kind of far. I think I tapped the book. With the with the scissors and not nothing to damage. I just okay. This is getting tight, so pull back. So you know now, don't go too far down because yeah. it touched. It didn't scrape, but it, it it touched, and you don't want to touch it. And maybe use a rounded scissor nose because those scissors were blunt at the end, uh, just in case. So nothing weird happens. And then we flapped open the middle like jaws of life on a rib cage. You just like yep. pried it, flat it, laid it down, and just pulled it out the top. Now, I will say, and maybe it was because of those scissors, because they were very tooth-like, added a kind of a sharp edge to the top that almost curled over. So it almost felt like you could scrape your book as you're pulling it out. So we had to be extra careful with that. But maybe with a finer scissor, you won't have that problem. You got to be careful when you're pulling it out because the plastic tends to curl. And that happens especially with an X-Acto knife, too. Like, I've had that. Mm. You're literally, as you're pushing it down, the pressure of the knife will... Uh, bend that plastic just enough to make it sharp enough as well to if, it, if you're dragging the comic and not paying attention and not like pulling the plastic away as you drag it you can cause a line on the book and I've had some close calls um, however this process took under three minutes and it was my first time fumbling around with scissors and all that. Jazz. And the second and time was even quicker. Second time was much quicker, but it was a newer book, so it was a little bit more sketch. So you got to understand, if you're going to do a really, really high-grade book and something modern where it's super um, glossy, you've really got to be careful. And this might not even be the best option for you. This is a Silver Age book. I don't think you have to worry too much of it, like the edge maybe touching it, so you don't have to worry about losing some crazy gloss that has come into comics since, what, 2000 and whatever. 
Absolutely. Um, the gloss does tend to cause things like fingerprints, but also it makes it super easy to damage. And you can tell because if it just touches something in the wrong way, you lose color. And that color loss is, is a big deal, especially on some of these bigger books. So I grabbed one of my books out. You had your Silver Age, Kirby goodness, you know, uh, Avengers 8. And you broke it out for a handful of reasons. You know, there were some bends. There were some creases that looked like they could be pressed out. And it was also pretty dirty. That's another reason to break stuff out of a slab if you think you can clean it and upgrade that book. Yeah, and here's a little note. Okay, just because a book looks gurdy, gurdy, dirty, dirty. It looks dirty, Jeff. It looks dirty, which is just bad grammar, so dirty grammar. It's dirty. Doesn't mean you're going to get a bump by cleaning it, okay? Your books in certain tiers get to certain tiers, and there's certain flaws that are okay with that. So lifting that dirt doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a grade bump, okay? But when I looked at this book, it was very dirty. So I'm assuming because everything else looked so nice with this book, there was a couple non-color breaking corners that could use a press, and it was a 6-0, I felt that cleaning off this dirt, pressing this book properly, that I could get this to a 6.5 safely and possibly a 7.0. And granted, you never know until you press them, but that's why I did it. Because there's enough of an, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Enough of a, a value to me to improve it just half a point yeah. that it's worth me cracking it out. Worth the risk, comic fam. So when I saw Jeff break this out, I'm like, oh, this is a great opportunity. He's just cracking books out. I can hand him my book that I want to get done. So I did. And unfortunately, this is not a great story for me because I had a CGC 9.2, I believe this was. I believe it was a 9.2. Dead World issue number 10. This is the variant copy of this book not for wussies is what it says and it's a cool book caliber you know um, caliber comics but you'll know on the back there is a ad for an up-and-coming comic book called the crow james obar goodness this right here is one of the best comic books ever created in history and i'll you know die by that sword i believe that firmly i think the crow is something everyone should own in their home in like one of those nice deluxe editions and I think everyone needs to read it and recommend it to somebody as they are recommending other comics. Because if you, if you don't read The Crow, you're not doing your job as a comic fan, in my opinion. Maybe it's because I'm a big fan of my comical romance and I like emo stuff. Whatever. I know I'm right. Comic fan, I got here in the comment section below because this book was a 9-2. I pressed it and it came back an 8 freaking 5. Hogwash. As my kids would say, fail. Fail. So this book... You broke out of the slab. You didn't go as far down when you were cutting it. And you also mentioned, because it was a modern book, a newer book, that you had more space to cut on the top, which made it easier. Yeah, this was far, far easier to remove from the inner well as there was probably an eighth of an inch, a solid eighth of an inch of clearing to cut the top off. And then we just filleted down the middle. You know, got to around, you know, the nose portion right in the midsection. Opened it up, pulled it out again. Had to be very careful, okay, because this does have some gloss to it. Want to be, you know, cautious. Pulled it out. And then we saw why it was an A5. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened. Maybe it wasn't shipping. Maybe it was me. Maybe I just didn't press it well. But there was a nice um, bend. Not a bend, but like a it was non-color breaking crease on the back cover that I think we can press out. So that's why I broke it back open. Cause I'm like, you know what? This was at one point a higher grade book and I couldn't have messed it up that bad. So yeah. it, for me, this, all, this was also a gift from my dad, comic pops. Cause he knows how much I love the crow. He also loves the crow and yeah, I just want to get the highest grade possible. And I think it could get the bump. So I broke it out. Comic fam. Let me know your experience cracking out slabs in the comments section below. I love to hear your success stories, your fails, all the above. I'll be real. I was cracking open your golden age book that had a sticker on it. Um, remind me, it was a silver streak book. Oh, the original time or not the action one? No, no, the the recent one. I think it was action. Yeah, it was an action. But the first time you ever cracked off that oh. one was was the Silver Streak. Yeah, that's right. So what happened is they came from the same collection. They had the same type of sticker. I saved the Silver Streak, took the sticker off, got the grade bump. Shout out to myself and my patience. However, the action comics, I could not get that sticker off. It was impossible. 
and I took it to my homie who's even better at getting stickers off and he couldn't get it off. But I did crack open that slab and I don't know, maybe I got a little impatient, but like I got, I got kind of like two thirds away around and I'm like, oh, I can just like lift this and just break it off. And in lifting it, breaking off, it snapped in a way I wasn't expecting. The book was fine. I'm being careful with the comic. I'm putting the, the comic safety over my personal safety, literally at this point. Of course, I got your back, brother. And I cut from here all the way down through my tattoo. No big deal. Like uh, it's a tattoo and it's, can't even tell anymore. But from here all the way down, dripping blood, dripping blood. Like it was no good. I'm like worried about the comic book. I'm like, all right, I got to get, but I'm putting my hand up in my casa, run into the bathroom, the baño and try not to get blood on anything, you know? Right. And, and legit, man, it's cause I was getting impatient. So seeing this new way to break out the slab got me excited for a handful of reasons, you know, cutting around that plastic, the inner well is always stressful and pulling it out is always stressful too. But seeing an easier process yeah, give me some excitement here. Dare I say it was arousing? 